background in uh, social and cultural studies. Uh, I used to work with from elderly people to children. And I used I worked with all kinds of uh, groups of people in society, and always was interesting interested in social issues and um, and, and justice. <laughs> and um, and actually, I made a switch, and from the switch, I I, um, I rolled into the nightlife. First as a partier, I partied a lot, from especially in my 20s, and then I uh, got, got to know like the owners of the parties and became a stage manager and the DJs, you know, getting into the scene. And, uh, but then I was like, mm, I'm missing this, this, this social element of it. And then uh, the nightmare thing came into my life and I was like, okay, this is the perfect combination. It wasn't an organization back then. Uh, Mirik was the nightmare, uh, it's not the current nightmare of Amsterdam, but, but was before. Uh, together with him, uh, we started this organization. And now uh, we're both flying all over the world uh, to, um, to pledge for this uh, nightlife, uh, the value of night culture for cities uh, in, in, in the world, actually. I grew up in uh, Palestine, in Ramallah, uh, the West Bank. And um, I started DJing, not really, trying to DJ. When I was a kid, like 10 or 11, I have no idea what age, I don't remember. But I started like just DJing very badly um, and just doing small parties in, uh, in Palestine for, you know, the friends, birthday, Halloween, well, these things. And afterwards, um, I went to study in AUB in Beirut, and that's where I discovered clubs. It was the first time I ever see a club, and um, it's the first time I heard techno, and I got really into it. It just created this really different space, you know. It was the Intifada had just finished two years earlier, and right after it, when I went there, it just it's the f only time I felt free, like I was like, ah, I can just, you know, I, it's just, it emptied my mind and that felt so good. We basically don't have clubs and um, parties cannot last after midnight. It used to have a reason when they started doing this law, it was just for exams or for kids studying or for disturbing, etc. And then after we started making isolated places which do not disturb and far away, mm -hmm. they still close them in, in, at midnight. Mm. So we've been trying to find a solution. And every time we do something a bit big, the government just like mm -hmm. goes a bit crazier. So after the last boiler room session, they really don't like us now. Oh, yeah, so yeah. we're trying to just try to implement it more into the culture and just try to see it more of a cultural thing and more of um, I think for the country, like it gets visibility, especially when we're at war and we're very like um, advertised in a very bad way. So uh, it's really nice to see the different side. And that's mm -hmm. the thing that we want to try and talk to them about it. And when I heard about the nightmare thing, I was like, this is what you need. Imagine we have somebody from us in the government. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's what we need, you know? Yeah, yeah because the whole nightmare concept is about um, uh, changing this mindset within a city administration or exactly. a government and to uh, get this nightlife scene or um, electronic music scene or underground scene acknowledged. Yeah, because it as is a part of day. the day. It's another completely like yeah. the day is split into two, 12 hours. And yeah, I always say like um, in the night um, you can you, you think of possibilities. You think in possibilities and other limitations. You yeah. can open open your mind literally and, and dance to the music or interact with whatever come uh, come across art that you've never come across before, yeah. and that's 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 why it's so important for a community because it, it does something to you as a person, and it, you you can yeah this energy spreads along along among the community then. That's true. Yeah, I I really feel that, and you actually see it as tangible like more much more in uh, Berlin when like. Mm. You go there, you actually see it. You see what techno did there and yeah. you see how people are and it's like very mind-blowing and then yeah. you're just like, oh, that's where we want to go, you know? Yeah. 
Yeah. And it's uh, it's really cool to see that it actually happened, so it can happen. Yeah, it can happen, and it's really about the DIY. You just have to do it and do it yourself, and and trust in in each other, and trust in in like this bottom up the power that you have, because you have if, as as long as you you grow as numbers, you really can. Uh, you have influ you can have influence, and like a nightmare for instance can be like the um, the link between the ones that are be need representation and the people, the decision makers. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. So now we're just like um, making more of a collective of the DJs and producers in Palestine. Cool. Yeah. And we're already like doing a lot of parties together, preparing for festivals, etc. Yeah, yeah. And we're gonna start going into that step hopefully soon.